Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Raw Wrap-Up. Let's try this again for you guys on the live stream. Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter, talking about Monday Night Raw solo tonight. Mike is taking care of business in his backyard, and from what I understand, business is good, so all the best to him. This evening, I'm not entirely sure if I would have the energy um, to to do a Mad Mike impression, and plus then I can't see the board or the uh, output or anything if I take my glasses off, so there's that too. Um, and, uh, you know, hey, hey but, uh, of course, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this show. If you don't check us out on the Facebook Live for Wrestling Mayhem Show here Monday nights, uh, shortly after Raw goes off the air, you can hit us up and look for the WWE Raw wrap-up over on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, all the places where you find your po- fine podcast. And, of course, we do throw the video up on our YouTube channel for Wrestling Mayhem Show for those of you that still like to do that kind of thing. Uh, so, and, and definitely you guys in here in the chat, I know there's a couple of the usual suspects, already told me what I screwed up before on my feed. So I really appreciate that to confirm that I didn't do 15 minutes of silence because uh, that would be a really, really boring podcast for me to put out for everybody in the morning. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, so I had a really interesting conversation that I began to tell you guys in that silent podcast. Um, you know, as doing things where we're doing in the storefront here and, and um, in the studio and, and a lot of people are kind of wanting to, are interested in what we're doing. Um, some of our friends in the community wanted to come and check out, you know, wrestling um, as we're doing here every Monday night. So uh, I had somebody actually join us that was um, kind of, you know, hasn't watched, I guess, barely any wrestling uh, in her life. And, and, and then somebody else who has watched like, you know, here and there uh, a bit of it, uh, it but not definitely is not up on things. And there was an interesting question that came up of of. At what point did they decide to wrap a drama and acting around this supposed athletic competition? Uh, to which I had to go all the way back to really the the carnival days uh, in 1930s as an answer. You know, you know, really kind of rack my brain back and had to explain that kind of carny atmosphere that goes on with wrestling and the showmanship and everything like that, right? And some of the unsavory parts too. But, uh, you know, it's it was a re- really interesting to look at it that way and, and get somebody's perspective, at least for the first hour and a half. And then they had to leave after an hour and a half, because let's be honest, no sane, normal person should be able nor want to sit through three hours and 15 minutes of raw. Um, so I, I think a person like that is better off um, just watching the highlights on YouTube the next day. Let's be honest about this. Um, we are kind of the nut jobs that 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 get into this um but anyways i decided to do a podcast every monday night and stayed up late and do that thing and to to you guys out there on facebook live uh so anyways uh you know thoughts on tonight again please hit us up in the chat room if you are joining us on the facebook live uh since i am mostly just gonna be talking to myself first let's get started with that uh, pull apart at the end of the show Jeez, this this really started and ended um, um, really strongly. Uh, At the end of the show, we got our Paul Heyman promo. Um, I I started thinking, because more and more we're going to be inviting people to watch wrestling with us. And I think I need some standard rules. You know, not that it applies to my guests tonight, but I started thinking as we get more people in here, you know, standard rules like like if 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 a strong if if a wonderful promo is about to happen, i.e., somebody named Heyman, Owens, or Jericho, etc. at all, um, um, everybody needs to pay attention because that's exactly what happened at the end of the show. Uh, a really good Heyman promo telling me exactly why I need to uh, pay for this pay-per-view here, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and pay for my WWE network for this this situation here, right? And, uh, you know, leading to, I, I love pull parts, I love I love Braun and Brock being being uh, uh, the last two standing in that you know it makes it feel like like they're maybe the 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 point of this entire match to begin with. Also making you wonder like man why don't we just get the two of them? That would be enough. And now we're getting a four way, so that's going to be fun. And also uh, Heyman saying exactly what I think a lot of us smart marks looking at this situation are probably thinking of like you know oh they're completely going to steal the belt and walk away. Uh, to which everybody comes out and says, no, no, I'm not, uh, we're, we're cutting for you, uh, period. Uh, so I think that's been a, a pretty fun. Um, 
to my point earlier, uh, Brandon out there is, uh, is saying that he watched the whole thing, but he's also flipping back and forth between Kansas City Royals game too. And I know a lot of um, you know our, our people here on this show, uh, our Wrestling Mayhem show uh, in general, are big Pirates fans. So we tend to lose them on Monday night games like this or if there's a Steelers game night or something like that. It's hard to get. Even Mike up in Poughkeepsie, New York, is a Steelers fan. So it's kind of... Or I guess he's more Penguins, but uh, but, but with the Pittsburgh stuff, and 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 we we tend to lose him and certain stuff like that too. But no, I'm loving that. This really felt like it was a a rolling um, to to SummerSlam, uh, and and then of course we had our SummerSlam come early between what happened with um, uh, Bray and 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 Finn Balor, as well as uh, our Cruiserweight title match, which was amazing. Um, interesting that we had to, and I guess we haven't had Demon. Demon Baylor since since last SummerSlam, so interesting that we had to create this reason for him to come out as the demon. Uh, I think that's acceptable having this kind of bloodbath uh, uh, match, uh, you know, for this uh, and setting it up. Um, a little weird in 2017 to have a bucket of blood dumped on somebody. Uh, a producer Missy was hanging here doing work and and said, uh, "When did we have this carry moment?" And, to, and had to show the the replay of it, uh, but but then the cruiserweight match, there was a good comment that somebody put out there tonight on Twitter that said, um, "I'd rather this be on Raw than buried in a pay per view uh, pre show." And even Justin Lombard saying that, "Hey, doing it tonight, the cruiserweight title change makes headlines, as opposed to being again buried in a stacked show of SummerSlam." You know, you're not winning the night when it comes to that, no matter how good a cruiserweight match is on SummerSlam. When we're talking about four hours plus two hours pre-show <laughs> of, of stuff. And uh, there's going to be a lot happening there. There's going to be a lot of, uh, hopefully, a lot of things that, that really get our attention and keep our attention over over seven hours of programming on, on Sunday night. Jeez. Well, at least we're going to have a party here and, and, and we'll entertain ourselves at the very least. So So there's that. Um, Hardy's Jason Jordan. We're kind of leaking it more into the broken Hardy's, uh, and uh, things like that. I, I just, I just, you know, almost a dream match kind of happened tonight between Mickey James and Emma. I know a lot of us on the show are very, very big on Emma and the uh, let's give Emma a chance kind of stuff. Um, and I'm just happy to see Mickey James in there in general, uh, being a big fan from back in the day. And of course, we got a nice. Uh, I think feature match between the two of them. Uh, so, so again, seeing seeing multiple women's matches uh, um, in here. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, Tazawa and Neville, I thought was a damn awesome match. Um, I have a problem with shark cages. Not that I'm afraid of sharks. I also don't want to. I don't. Want, I don't want to fuck with sharks either. But uh, um, yeah, like Brandon is saying that 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 was probably going to pre- be a pre-show. F- match for the cruiserweights anyways and good to have them here oh i clicked on enzo's name um we've now had our third as of the show uh shark cage based concept last year we had uh, chris jericho in a match uh, involving kevin owens uh, up in the cage and we had paul ellering in in the match with i believe it was tm61 and uh authors of pain which may have actually happened at brooklyn last year and in both cases, I believe they dropped something in the ring and became factors. So the shark cage concept is not really living up to it. This person's not going to get involved um, atmosphere. Also weird that Enzo, being kind of a good guy, um, is involved. Um, and, and I also missed when, when the Gallows and Anderson really got involved in this too, but I guess I guess you got to do something. Also, anybody notice how much of the paint from the obviously spray painted shark cage was left on Big Show when he was out in the back tending to his hand? It's kind of like that spray tanner mark that uh, Randy Orton leaves in the ring sometimes. But anyways, um, didn't catch much of, most of it again because I guess uh, we're hanging out and talking about things. Um, but uh, I also maybe some of the spray paint was left from the uh, lifeguard chair that Alexa Bliss was sitting in during her during the uh, ladies match earlier between Sasha and Nia. Um, 
Elias. We have to mention Elias, and you have to believe that at least half of us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show crew uh, may already have our orders in for the uh, uh, I Walk with Elias t- World Tour t-shirts that he sported tonight. Um, our boy, our Pittsburgh boy, our friend of the show, Elias, I want to ca- say Samson. After the, the, How long did it take me to remember his name from the old Logan Shulo, and now they just shortened it for me? It's like it's like I wasted time. Um, but uh, <laughs> he came out. He sang. He waffled uh, our truth. I mean, I, do you want anything more from a rock segment involving the Drifter? Uh, good to see. It. it feels like they're kind of building them up to something, you know, with with especially the last few few weeks. And remember, in Pittsburgh, he actually got to finish the song. So really do appreciate that. And I do need to go back and watch that, too, because I understand Corey Graves' uh, Pittsburgh-based commentary was fantastic. Uh, so that has to happen when I, it pops up on the network. Um, anyways, uh, and I guess the last thing to kind of discuss is the the Shield getting back together, the will they, won't they, get a damn room Dean and Seth uh, saga finally uh, sort of ended tonight as we get uh, the, the, the match we didn't know we want between them and uh, Cesaro and Sheamus coming up at SummerSlam in which a I think a Mike is right is in line here because I, I, I do believe uh, uh, he, he called the, the, the friends reluctantly getting the, t- the tag titles uh, situation, although they're, they're a little less reluctant now too. Um, good, good thing that came up with uh, well, it's Twitter or if it was, I think it was Twitter, Vaughn, Vaughn Johnson. Uh, he's out there, our boy out in Philly, friend of the show, uh, saying that he's, he's going to geek out if, uh, if the Shield comes out if they come out as the shield at SummerSlam, to which I replied, thinking back to the glory days at SummerSlam with the Degeneration X reunion tour where they came out in a tank. So what if our shield reunion guys come out in a SWAT vehicle? Seems to only make sense at this point. And you never know, maybe they'll get involved in that main event and really uh, get the shield back together. And, uh, I don't know, maybe go a little heelish. I don't know. Not that people won't cheer them as they're back together, but still, it's, it's an interesting idea. I might be I might be wanting a little too much out of that in the end of it. So um, as far as Raw tonight, I think it was a pretty solid two and a half hours. I You know, nothing really was like, oh, God, why is this on my TV? Um, you know, even to the point where I probably the, the most I didn't care stuff was the Jason Jordan mistrage, and even that wasn't half bad, you know. I mean... It's just the only thing where I kind of tuned out that I, that I recall f- throughout the night. So, um, no, uh, really fun night of Raw. Um, definitely, I think, a pretty strong one going into SummerSlam. Had a lot of fun just by itself watching some matches and getting some results out of, uh, you know, something like a Cruiserweight title change or things like that. You know, and again, tomorrow night we're going to get Jinder Mahal and, and John Cena. So there's um, kind of, I think you're starting to see as we're, uh, you know, we've been talking about our our, my, our glorified Saturday night's main event uh, pay per views leading up to a SummerSlam like this. You know, they're trying to you know step back and say, hey, let's do important things on the shows because we're kind of losing steam here, and kind of refocusing on that. How long will it last? How long will it matter? Who knows? But um, I'm kind of interested to see what a John Cena versus uh, Jinder Mahal might look like tomorrow night especially after a fantastic match between uh, 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 Cena and Nakamura uh, two weeks ago now. Uh, so let's see what happens with that. Um, from the chat, see if you guys have anything else going on. Um, so shouts to Mike, uh, Mad Mike out there. Uh, hopefully he will return here next week. And, of course, we're doing, doing the Wrestling Mayhem show. We're going to have a very special guest, Magnum CK. He's been on the Indie Mayhem show, uh, at least briefly. We did an interview with him and Jock Sansom as the Mega Plowers up in Meadville, PA earlier this year as part of the Night of the Superstars, a uh, night that included Ryback and Ricky Steamboat. Of course, I had a great conversation with Ricky Steamboat on that uh, on that night as well. That's in our archives for Indie Mayhem show. And uh, he'll be joining us on the main show at 10 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live and followed by the interview we're going to do with him. He's, he's driving in here from Ohio, guys. That's awesome, and I can't wait to hear uh, what he just – his story again uh, a little more fleshed down and he's doing a lot of interesting things and i guess he's sort of rebooting um what magnum ck is on the on the indies right now uh so really looking forward to that discussion and seeing what he brings i think we're going to talk a lot of he, he said he's he's promising 
something something and talk about Dino Bravo. Uh, so, and as you guys know, I think you're well aware, there's not been nearly enough Dino Bravo on our on our properties in the last couple of years. So hopefully we up our um, French Canadian quotient there. Maybe I don't even know. Maybe he'll drop some 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 French on us, and we'll get a whole new uh, you know audience there. So. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. It is the Raw Wrap-Up. I'm Sorgatron. Find me on Sorgatron on the I. No, no, that's the other thing. Twitter or the Instagram. We're doing a lot of stories. If you followed uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Instagram over the weekend, and we do have this reposted on our Facebook and our Twitter, you can check out my uh, Indie Wrestling Road Diary uh, as I visited Rise Wrestling down in Lamont Furnace, PA, as well as the Big Time Wrestling Ballpark Show in Washington that included Sting... In the ring with our buddy John, Joe Dombrowski. Facade, his last U.S. match before he's going to India for an extended stay. Um, as well as Scott Steiner almost killing a fan. Um, which I didn't get, but he, there's there's footage out there that needs to be shared for sure. Uh, so please check out everything going out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And until next time, ladies and gents, keep it 